May God bless you and may his presence continue to be with us in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. The focus of our discussion here is to give understanding about why the worship of Yeshua the Messiah, or Jesus Christ, is right and is not idolatry. First, have you ever asked yourself why you or other Christians worship Yeshua the Messiah, also known as Jesus Christ, along with God Almighty? Or perhaps you may also have seen some video clips in social media where Christians are asked to quote a verse or two from the Bible, and most could not. Or some other clips where some Christians are interrogated on the street. Interrogated or questioned by some people of other faith as to why the Christians practice idolatry by worshipping Jesus Christ instead of just God Almighty. And often, many of the Christians are left sweaty and biting their lips in the video clips because they are unable to provide answers to the opponent. They are unable to explain why they worship Jesus or do what they do in their faith. And accusers, sensing the opportunity to attack, go on pressing their point or questions in an attempt to ridicule the believer and the Christian about what they believe in. And by the way, the devil and his agents just need a small window in order to press in their advantage. And do not be surprised to know that the devil and the agents of the kingdom of darkness study and know the Bible very well than many believers. This is so that they can deliberately twist it in order to attack and confuse a believer who does not know their Bible. The word of God is the sword of the Spirit, by which the enemy is quickly silenced. Satan knows the Bible, but deliberately twists it to confuse. The Lord only had to use the word of God correctly to reply to Satan, such as in the temptation as recorded in Matthew for verses 3 to 11. All the Lord had to say was that it is written. He did not have to even say the book or chapter or verse. But what the Bible says. His knowledge and understanding of what the Scripture says was enough. That is what believers need. Some do not even know what the Bible says. Some memorize Bible books, chapters, and verses, but without without understanding. Now let us see just ten reasons, out of many other reasons, why Yeshua the Messiah or Jesus is worshipped by Christians, and it is not idolatry. If you need to know more about this and all about the end time, the AZ of the end time, refer to the end time book entitled, The Mysteries of the End Time Unveiled. And many of what is in the book are already being fulfilled for the end time. Now let's look at some of the reasons why the worship of Yeshua the Messiah or Jesus Christ is not idolatry. Number 1. The scripture tells us that Yeshua the Messiah or Jesus Christ is the begotten Son of God, John 3 verse 16. John 3 verse 16. For God so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that anyone who believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. End of reading. The key words I want to point out here is only begotten son. It means to be unique, one of a kind born. That means there is no other. Angels are sons of God, but not begotten. They were created. We are children of God, but not begotten. We were created and then adopted through the begotten son of God, Yeshua the Messiah. Only Yeshua the Messiah has the DNA and the exact composition or identity of God. That makes him God. So Yeshua or Jesus is not just a special prophet to be respected. He is more than that. Both him and God are prophets because they know all things and have spoken of what will happen from the beginning before they do. But just as God is not referred to as just a prophet, the same is Jesus or Yeshua the Messiah who shares the same identity with God. Number 2. The scripture tells us that he, Yeshua the Messiah, is the word of God, who has been with God from the beginning and that he is God. John 1 verses 1 to 2. John 1 verses 1 to 2. In the beginning was the word. 
The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2. He was existing with God from the very beginning. End of reading. The scripture we just read confirms three things to us. Namely that. He is the Word of God. He has been existing with God from the very beginning. And that He is God. Only one who is God is to be worship. And Yeshua the Messiah is God. Number three, He was not only existing with God, but shared the same glory with God the Father before the world existed. John 17 verse 5 John 17 verse 5 And now, Father, glorify me along with yourself. Give me the glory which I had with you before the world existed. End of reading. Yeshua the Messiah has always shared the glory, the visibility, and equality with God before the world existed. The worship of him is therefore not idolatry. He only temporarily set aside that glory in order to fulfill his purpose when he first came earth to die for our sins. And once as he was done, he took back the glory. Number 4. The Scriptures also tells us that everything was created, brought into existence by him, Yeshua the Messiah. John 1 verse 3. John 1 verse 3. Everything was created, brought into existence, by him. There was nothing created, except through him. End of reading. As the Scriptures tells us, it was through him, Yeshua the Messiah, the Word and Son of God that all things were created. So everything, including all humans and angels, were created by him. He is the word of God, which means the one who establishes and makes things happen or to be established according to the word of God. There is no sin or idolatry in worshipping your creator, which Yeshua the Messiah is. Number 5. Yeshua the Messiah, as the word of God became flesh, that is born physical with flesh and bones. To live among humans and to die for the sins of all. John 1 verse 14. John 1 verse 14 The Word became flesh, that is physical body, human flesh with bones, and lived among us. We have seen, with our own eyes, His glory, the glory of the only begotten, unique, one of a kind born, Son of the Father. He was full of grace, unmerited loving kindness, and truth. End of reading. So the scripture tells us he became flesh and dwelled among humans to fulfill his purpose of salvation. While on earth, he was not worshipped as God because he needed to complete his purpose and so confirm that he is God. Which he did and then took back his original glory and position as God. Number 6. He died and rose up from the grave on the third day, to confirm he is God. He confirmed that grave and death have no hold on him, and that he is the resurrection and life. And he holds the key of life and death, John 11 verse 25, Revelation 1 verse 18. Only one, who is God, can hold the key of life and death, and only him can give life or take away life, permanently. That is who Yeshua the Messiah is and deserves our worship. Number 7. Upon his resurrection, he ascended to heaven, the highest of heavens to take his place at the right hand of God the Father. That makes him God. And he has a name that is above all other names, and at his name every knee bows and every tongue confesses that he is Lord. Philippians 2 verses 9 to 10. Philippians 2 verse 9 On account of this, God also raised him up gloriously to the highest place of honour, and has given him the name that is above every other name. Verse 10 That at the name of Yeshua, every knee should bow, in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Verse 11 And that every tongue should confess that Yeshua the Messiah is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. End of reading. John 14 verse 14. If you ask for anything in my name, I will do it. 
Only one who is God can make such a promise. That makes him God. Number 8. The scriptures tell us that he is the Lamb of God and he is worshipped in heaven day and night. This followed the completion of his first coming to the earth to die for the sins of all and rose up from the grave. He is worshipped in heaven by the elders and the angels, Revelation 5 verse 8. Revelation 5 verse 8, after he had taken the scroll, the four living beings prostrated along with the twenty-four elders in front of the Lamb. Each one was having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Revelation 5 verse 12, the angels were singing with a loud voice. Worthy is the Lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. End of reading. So we see that even in heaven, he is worshipped. The twenty-four elders, along with millions and millions of angels prostrated before him, the Lamb to worship him, before God the Father. And we who are the main beneficiaries of his redemption and salvation are supposed to worship him even more. Number 9. And the scripture tells us all creatures, which he created in heaven, and on the earth, and under the earth, and in the sea, and all things will worship him, the Lamb along with God, who sits on the throne in heaven, forever and ever. Revelation 5 verse 13. Revelation 5 verse 13 And I heard every creature in heaven, and on the earth, and under the earth, and in the sea, and all things in them. They were saying, Blessing, praises, and honour, and glory and power, belong to the one who is sitting on the throne, and to the Lamb, forever and ever. End of reading. From what is going on in heaven, we can see it is not idolatry to worship Yeshua the Messiah, who died for us as the Lamb of God. Number 10. He is part of the Holy Trinity. Now let me again explain one more mystery. The notion of the existence of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit confuses a lot of people. Some people think all like to explain God away similar to water, which in one state it is solid ice, and at some other point turns into a liquid, and at another time turning into vapor or gas. So they picture or start with the God of the Old Testament. Then they assume he vacated his throne in heaven and changed to come to the earth to die on the cross. And then after that, that same God rose up and turned into the Spirit and went back to heaven. This is very wrong. Now let me again, as I had done in the past, explain the mystery of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Yes, they did appear to me, not one after the other, but simultaneously together to me, in bodily form. And am therefore a witness of their coexistence. And they exist it just as the scripture has said. It is not a fallacy, but true. Let me give you a simple explanation I got from God himself. Let's go back to Genesis, and as we do so, think of this. When God said, in Genesis 1 verse 26, let us create man in our own image. Who was he talking to? Who do you think that us represent? Do you think God was talking in fellowship with the angels to get their permission? No. Not to angels. For angels are his mere messengers, who are creatures, created by the sun. For through the sun were all things, including angels created. So God does not need to go into discussion or conference meeting with angels about creation of mankind. When God said, let us create man in our own image, God the Father was talking to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. It was the Trinity in operation. It was their decision to create angels and also their decision later to create mankind. And Adam was created in the image and likeness of God. And since God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit have the same image and likeness, 
He simply said let us create man in our own image, not images or likenesses. For there is just one. So, this mystery or understanding of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit and their operations. I'm sharing with you I received directly from God the Father himself. And God the Father, who was standing with the Son, did the speaking himself to me this time. Now God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit are one and the same. And they operate together seamlessly. They are of the same likeness and mind. And are completely connected in thinking, thought, decision, desire and so on. If for any reason they separate, one can perform all the functions of the other and are linked all the time. It is impossible for them to disagree with each other or for any to be in disagreement with the other two. For they all have the same thought, will and desire simultaneously. Now here is the simplest way to understand, consider a large piece of paper in your hands. Now cut or divide the paper into three parts. One part to give out to someone, the sun, one part to use to wrap something, the spirit, and the third part to keep for yourself, the father. Now, does dividing the paper into three make them any different or inferior to each other? No, it does not. All the three parts started together and came from one source, one beginning, and are exactly identical in likeness, color, texture, composition, abilities, etc. Only their assigned functions are different. It is the same with the three parts or the Trinity we call God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But unlike the paper analogy, they are much larger, without limit in size, scope, ability, etc. And are still always connected together. A second analogy, in terms of their functions is the building, where you have the architect, the builder and the decorator or finisher. God the Father can be seen as the architect of all things. The Son, as the Word is, the builder of all things, that creates and brings to be the purpose or desire of the Father. And the Holy Spirit is the one that maintains, decorates, beautifies, strengthens, etc. Now you know that the worship of Yeshua the Messiah or Jesus Christ, as he is known among the Gentiles, is not idolatry. And he rightly deserves to be worshipped. In conclusion, may the grace of the Lord Yeshua the Messiah, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. And Amen.